Hey everybody, welcome to Arkham Noir. This is a solo game based in the HP Lovecraft universe, and it's kind of like a, it looks like, a, it's just a simple little, simple little matching game with a lot of things that are stacked up against me. I win if I have discovered um, five pieces of the puzzle. I lose uh, if my stability, if my sanity ever goes over the edge and I have too many sanity cards in my sanity area or if I cannot draw a victim through the various effects that make me draw a victim. I draw new victim cards if my time thing ever hits five or higher. Um, and any time I have to go through this deck, I draw a new victim card and place it below the others. If there are no victims and I draw one, I, I must draw one I lose. I take all cards from the discarded area and form a new draw deck and draw the necessary cards and continue my turn. Shall we try this out? Here's the play area. It looks super crooked, but I just, I swear I just fixed the camera. It probably is crooked actually in real life. Because if I go like this now, it's probably just a tiny bit better. It's not though. Bring all this down. Those are my victims. So, let's try this out, shall we? Just gonna move all of these up a tiny bit just because we might need another victim. So on our turn, we can do one of five things. We can take the first lead card. So this card right here to the left of all the leads, these are all of the leads we currently have. I, uh, I either take it into hand, I play it to an open case, I discard it and play a clue card from my hand to an open case, I discard it and close an open case, or I discard it and pass. So, um, To play something into the case, these symbols on this side, you can't really see them too well from this, but they need to match the symbols on um, the right side. So in order to play one of these cards, the cards on the left up here need to have a magnifying glass or a book, or in her case, an eyeball or a book. So what I'm gonna do for my action is we're going to discard this card. It has one time on it, so it is actually gonna come up over here. And then I'm gonna play a card from my hand to an open case. So on the Azanath Wait, the student, we're gonna play this Rat Bite. I then activate the ability of the card. If it's black, I must, so I discard one card from the leads row. Um, we're gonna get the time is the only one that matters if it's discarded for any reason. So we're gonna discard this one. I think. I just gotta find where the puzzle piece would be. Attributes. <clears throat> no, that card actually looks pretty important. So we're just gonna discard this guy. Discard those face down. So then we go to cleanup, check victory condition, we have not, these all move over, and then new cards are added. Oh, look at that, it's Brown Jenkins. You love Brown Jenkins, he's a good guy. Yeah, we need five of those puzzle pieces. We have two currently in the display, which is nice. So, we're gonna draw this card and then have all these scoot over. Okay. Now it comes to our turn again. A lot of these cards have time penalties, huh? <clears throat> so, a stability check. Just gonna look at that. Okay, stability check. Perform a stability check, draw the top card. Otherwise, discard the card. Okay, that's the stability penalty. I get it. Okay. So, next turn we would love to draw Kenzie a Mason. Uh, Mason. So we're gonna discard this card, which is gonna go over here as a time penalty, which isn't great. But we will play a card into the thing 
which we're going to place this shambling corpse, which will require us to make a stability check, which won't trigger because there's no stability check on there. These all slide over. Okay, so for this turn, we would love to draw Kenzia Mason into our hand. Slippity slide on over. Recently trampled grass, cellar. All right. So she's a person of interest. She also has a lock on her card and we don't have any keys to play it. But I guess we don't need to rush to play her, right? Okay, okay, so we're actually gonna also grab our friend Brown Jenkins. Actually, no, we're not, you know what? I think we can let Brown Jenkins go. Because she has the ability to shuffle the discard into the draw stack, which seems pretty good. So we're gonna actually discard Brown Jenkins. See and hell, you dumb guy. And I just have to look at that requirement, the three. Any clue cards, okay. So we can play um, John Upham, the math professor, which he does lets me to do is take one card from the time penalty box, which seems helpful. We're gonna grab this alley because then we can start doing things with that character. Awesome, these all slide over. Now we have a new action. Search the draw stack for one card. Wow, that seems very powerful. We're just gonna discard, oh no. I mean, yeah, that can go up here. That's just that's just how it has to be, right? Um, and then we're gonna get the alleyway going over here. Cause now we can start taking advantage of some of those. Okay. So I'll slide over. The old burying ground. Hmm. Okay, this case is unfolding rapidly before my eyes. These next three all have time things on them, which are a bit unfortunate. This is a child that died in the alleyway. Azinth died from a rat bite and there was a shambling corpse at the scene. This actually is doing a good job in my mind of painting a picture, which I do enjoy. Okay. Well, I guess this is going to go up here. Time keeps on slipping into the future. But we're going to play this guy. So first I have to make a stability check, which will not trigger. But he is the dark man of the witch cult. Yeah, not the tell. So what, I, what that allows me to do is search the draw stack for one card. So I would love to grab something with a book with a positive symbol. Randolph Carter. Take one card from the discard area. That could be helpful. He has a key too. So what if we get him going? Let's see what else there is. Let's see all the keys. A bunch of keys were coming. Don't you need different top symbols for that one? Uh, to play a card with a three attribute to an open case, there must be at least that many clue cards already in the line of investigation. So I don't think it specifies with that. Yeah, the example in here has um, the same attributes for that three card. Okay. All right, well, that was played. 
So then these all slide on over. We're going to have another dead body coming our way soon, for sure. Scratching inside the walls. Okay. So how many is it? Five time cards is what you're saying. Uh, so I could pick up one of these, which is actually probably good for me. And then we have some time off, but we do have some keys coming up that we really want to take advantage of. So what we're going to do is discard this card, putting it up here, unfortunately. But what can you do? These don't slide over yet. But then we're going to play uh, our boy Randolph Carter, the author. So he has a key. So now the next time we play a lock, we can play it in this row, which is going to be pretty stellar. One, two, three, four. Do we actually want to play this one down here? I think we do. The murder of the child is a kid. Oh, but that's right. We start taking stability checks anytime. We're just gonna, he's gonna go somewhere. I just don't know where yet. After the seventh. So one, two, three, four. Okay, we could put him here. The problem is then we have, that's a location. No, I think we're going to put this one here. So the allows me to take one card from the discard area. So we need thumbprint. Thumbprint for this one, because we need some, some clues. How's it going, everyone, except Hutch? Hmm. Whoa! I guess I don't have to do this. I'm not going to do this, actually, I think. Because it's optional. But what's important is we have a key. So this one, we're gonna take this card into our hand. Okay. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Okay, this place needs a location, but it also needs a thumbprint. And we can get the thumbprint with that. So we can discard this. Got a lot of time penalties coming up. That allows us to take a card from the discard. Do we want to do that? No, I think we still don't. I will take this though, because that's the thumbprint we need in a lot of these. So how many, we need five different symbols? All right, so one, two, there are six symbols. We have one, two, three, four. Looks like we're gonna have to open up a new case very soon. Oh no. This is hollowed. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a problem. <laughs> oh, no. This game's... This game's tough. I 
I guess we're going to put Kenzie Mason here. And we discard these cards. We have a new victim. And that victim is Frank Elwood, the student. He's down here. The Kenzie Mason allows me to shuffle this into here, which I will do. Sorry, I have to make a check first. There is not one. And then we shuffle the discard into here. Yeah, not Frank Elwood. Don't know what the best course of action is, but... <laughs> We're going to find out, aren't we? from wait he's a wizard he's a wizard Harry okay I think what we need to do is unfortunately discard this to play this here so we need a puzzle piece to finish that but now we have one, two, three, four, five symbols. I really wanted her down here, but what can you do? I'm, I, I can't, I can't frame somebody for the murder. I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a good police officer, or uh, personal detective. On the plus side, we can just draw this card. And then also pick up this card. We do have a whole other case we can work on now down at the bottom, which is nice. Um, but time keeps on slipping into the future. Puzzle piece. <laughs> Puzzle piece. Okay. We're going to play the Witch Lights here, discarding this up into the time zone. Screw you, time zone. Uh, we'll make a stability check. We're fine. So that's good. These then slide over. Okay. We're okay with losing Ephraim Waite, the wizard. I agree, Julie. I agree. One, two, three. Oh, but he's a puzzle piece. I guess we actually do want him. Because we can frame him for the murder. No, we can't! We can't frame him for the murder. Everything's just unraveling before our very eyes right now. You know what, I guess the correct course of action is actually, we're gonna just discard him to play a card from our hand. And it's probably going to be this disturbing uh, personality change. Ooh, first bit of stability got us. It's a Shuggeth. Oh, so spooky. Okay. We're going to draw some cards into our hand. Oh, I'm dumb because you can play the card from here. Do we want to do that instead? It's a key. You know, sometimes we just have to... No, I think we draw it. But then we play this one to this case down here. Small handprints. No, we're gonna play this one up here. 
Small handprints. Okay, one, two, three, four. We need one more. So what symbols are we missing? Monster and oddity. That's none of these. So maybe we can take advantage of something. I guess we could take this into our hand. Or we discard this one and then take Meadow Hill. I think that's the correct course of action. So we discard this because it doesn't have a time on it. And then... This queerly angled garret. We'll go there. Oh, there's an oddity. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we want to pick up this meadow hill into our hand, I think. Okay. This detective work is hard. I'll tell you what, boys and girls. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. We don't have a puzzle there. We can close the case, but it won't push us to our objective, and we need how many to win? Five puzzle cards with different clue types. Uh, I'm going to be completely real with everyone. We're not winning this game. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. I'll be lucky if we get one of them, TBH. All right, we're gonna uh, discard this guy. And then, pass, I think. Okay, can we play this somewhere? We can. Holt Eden through heart. So we'll make a stability check. We're fine. And then, Let's take one card from the lead row. None of these are great. So, eyeball. Oh, that could do something. That actually can do this. All right, we'll take the Arkham Sanitarium. We have to discard this into the time zone to play Arkham Sanitarium down here, which allows me to take a card from here. We're going to take uh, this heart. The Shuggeth, sorry. Oh, it's a Shuggeth! Then we play... We play this here. Uh, nope, no stability check. So that one is... Shuffle this into here, let's do it. So we lose this. Oh, we're about to... About to be in a bit of a pickle, everybody. Just a wee bit of a pickle. <clears throat> card. 
We're gonna discard this and close a case. So to close a case, uh, five different types of clue cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So what we wanna do, we can score any cards. So we're gonna score Ken, uh, Kezia Mason, the witch. Um, and there are at least five clue cards. So one, two, three, four, five. We did it. So. All of these cards go up here. So the story of uh, Ladislav Jaco, the child who was murdered, was done by Kezia Mason. I got there through Randolph Carter. He was found in an alleyway. The violet witch lights led me to my clue. Small handprints also helped, which, uh, you know, further proved it. His hole was eaten through his heart by a shuggeth. So we have now, sorry, this should be up here. And these are my closed cases. We've done it. One closed case. <laughs> Boys and girls, so you're telling me we at least solved one murder. Thank God. Okay. So we're specifically looking for a puzzle piece to go up there. Or an eye that takes us to a book. Um, I suppose I'm just going to draw this because it's pretty powerful. It's a pretty powerful card. So oddly enough, we kind of want a case to open. Yeah, classic murder. Hate to see it. It's a tragedy, but it just happens. What can you do, right? Ah. Uh. Well, I guess we have to uh, open case. The case of Edward Pickman Derby. He's a poet and he knew it until he died. Uh, and unfortunately we just have to pass. Ooh, cryptic papers. Okay. Well, we're gonna discard this card. This will be revealed, I'm not gonna look at it, but we are going to place this here and we're going to uh, use our Dr. Armitage, removing it from the game to unlock this key, which allows us to take one of these other things and put it in, into our hand. Now here's the rest of those things. Okay. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Fetid order. Moses Sergeant, you're just bad news bears all around, buddy. I guess we can grab this. The problem is this is then gonna go on forever. <laughs> Forever. I shouldn't have been able to look at that one, so good thing I didn't take it. That would have been cheating. All right. Well, this fetid odor can come over here. Super spooky. I'm not going to do that ability because then I would have to discard a card anyway. And we're not really in the case of just discarding cards for no reason. Okay, can we get to this? That's the goal. We need a magnifying glass on the right. Oh, 
holy heck, this game's difficult. I guess we're gonna place, oh god damn you, bucko. I, but I guess I could have you involved in this murder. So we're gonna have to discard a card from our hands. And it's gonna be this irresistible pull, which is gonna go up there in our timer. But we have cryptic papers to our advantage. Which fits in most places pretty well, actually. <sighs> we just don't have anything that connects to, like, magnifying glasses in a nice way on the right side. These cases are going to come up empty. I'm telling you guys that right now. So I guess we're going to discard this and then play a card from our hand. We could at the very least place this here. Okay. gonna pick up some cards maybe we can get our way out of it pick up a card oh the Necronomicon showed up is there a limit to a case's length after the seventh card uh, you have a chance of going <clears throat> crazy while doing it One, two, three. We got three different types of things down there. That's great. Oh, we're going to lose this game. That's just how it is. <gasps> That's the puzzle piece we need. So we want to be able to place that next turn. So I guess we're just going to put this here. We can't put that there. <clears throat> I'm dumb. We can't put this here, though. Coded knock. So we got to take a card from the time thing. Um, I'm not going to. Hey, Brown Jenkins is back. We're going to slip this in here, which allows me to take any card. We're going to grab this. Okay. So we have to discard this up here to place that there. Stability check. We're fine. But this does go up here. <clears throat> okay. Oh, the unnameable. Look at him. He's spooky scary. So now I'm going to close a case. So we have to discard this. The Necronomicon. But we have one, two, three, four, five. So I can score this. The sealed loft and then we have one two three four five so the case this case is closed as an if wait your murder is solved there was a rat bite scratching in the walls how fitting batman the card game no uh arkham horror or, or well arkham the city 
uh, the fictional city in H.P. Lovecraft's work of horror mythos. Scratching the walls in the cellar, Dark Man of the Witch Cult was there. Joe Upham, the math professor, helped me in a shambling corpse. Probably your corpse. So, two cases closed. I guess you could say we're nailing it. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to lose very soon. I think we had our two thorough shuffles. Excuse me. Used a bit prematurely. One, two, three. Oh my god, we only have three symbols down there. Huh. Brown! No, brown! I'm going to discard Brown Jenkins. We have a location for this murder. Pit of the Shuggaths, which allows us to take a card from here and put it into our hand. One, two, three, four. So I need another one of those. I guess it could be you. Okay, these slide over. We're going to discard this hypnotism to play this here, the cryptic papers. We're going to, have to make one of these checks. It's discarded, but we do not take damage. I actually would have loved to take damage there. Can discard this guy and pass. And then we're gonna play the unnameable over here. Make one of these checks. Nothing happens. Uh-oh. So we can discard this <clears throat> to close this case. So we have one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. We can get rid of this, put this up here. The knife of grotesque design. Yes, it was a special character of Ashen Man. Yes, that's correct. So the fetid order, odor, probably came from Moses Sargent. There was a coded knock to the pit of the Shuggets where I found cryptic papers, and then I went to the, the unnameable. We have solved at least one more murder. Uh, we have to draw a card, but we can't, so that opens up another case. The case of Walter Gilman, the student. Let's bring all this stuff up. And then this gets shuffled. Now we're running out of time. Hey, Brown Jenkins. Stand that there. Oh, we take a damage? Okay, that could be worse. Okay. I believe now I can close this bottom case. The problem is we already have this uh, location up here, but better to close it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, better to close it. I don't know if we can do anything about this. Brown Jenkins, you monster! Hmm. Man, I suppose we could try to work on this case for a bit. Because we can put this here. Shot in the head six times. Holy shit, Walter Gilman. We're so sorry that happened to you. I have to discard a card from this row. It's going to be this one. So. We can then discard this. To play a card from our hand. Object from outside. Nothing there. Pick that up into our hand. Tell me the Necronomicon ain't a book. I guess I... Uh, God. I need to get five... I need to get five different symbols with five cases to get victory. Oh, yeah. So, victory condition. It says default is easy as five different puzzle card types. And we had one, two, three, four, five victims. Can you score multiple, though? You can score any, so you can score multiple puzzle pieces, which is probably the way you want to go in the in the path in the next times you go for it. Hard game though, but that's what makes games like this interesting, right? Okay, because we're just gonna discard this and move this over here. We can, at the very least, play this in here. And we could put it here and check this. Nope, we lose. <laughs> uh, that's a loss. I don't think there was a way. I don't think there was a way for us to win that. Uh, the game's really cool, though. I, I do really dig the game. The flavors there, even though the the flavor has very little impact on the game. Uh, and I feel like uh, I'd be able to do better on future playthroughs of it. Like, for example, I feel like I spent my ability to shuffle the discard back in. I spent both of, the, uh, both of them a bit too early. That if I had more time, <clears throat> I would probably be able to take better advantage of it. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty cool system. I think the mechanics are pretty stellar. Uh, if you like the flavor of the game... I think it's worth checking out, to be honest. It was pretty cheap, too. I remember the game being pretty cheap. Thanks for watching on YouTube, everybody. See ya.